apologies for the technical difficulties as we get things going here tonight, but we are live and underway here from George Finney Stadium, Trestle Field, where it's men's lacrosse action, the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. They're hosting the Kenyon College Owls, and currently the Yellow Jackets, they find themselves trailing one goal to zero at this point, four minutes played so far in the opening period. Of course, you're watching and listening live on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. I'm Cole McDaniel. Want to welcome everybody in. And going to touch on both of these teams here in just a moment. Of course, as the game's going underway, the Yellow Jackets in their all-white uniforms, the gold helmets, and the Kenyon College Owls in all purple with the white helmets. Yellow Jackets attacking the goal off to your left, firing that shot. And there is a game-tying goal from number four, Jake Nanoski, the senior attacker from Medina, level at one. First goal of the night for Kenyon, coming by way of Rollins Heath, the junior midfielder from Montclair, New Jersey. And that's really what got things started here in the opening stages of this one between two teams that really could put up a good battle here tonight. The Yellow Jackets, slow start to the year. This is their home opener. Went on the road over the weekend to get the season underway all the way down to Center College in Kentucky where they fell in a close one 12-10. Fortunate for the men's program, they were able to actually play that one as the women's matchup was supposed to be here on Saturday. And because uh, of the snow, center made their way up from Kentucky and tried to do what could be done to clear off the field. And uh, it continued to snow and couldn't really see the lines and conditions weren't good enough for the women to play that game. So unfortunately, that one got canceled. Yellow Jackets men's team, of course, were fortunate enough to get their game in down there in Kentucky. But weather has certainly changed throughout the week so far. A heat wave. See all those piles of snow off to the side, but currently in the 50s at the start of this one. Low shot, and that one skips up for Samuel Lopiccolo, the senior goalkeeper from Mason. He's going to work it out of the back. And a few changes for both of these squads. So far in the early stages, Kenyon has the better of the shots. Five of them to this point, three on goal. Two for the Yellow Jackets, two on goal. And as I mentioned, all tied it up at one apiece. Kenyon, though, they come into this one with an overall record of 1-0. and So starting off the year in good positive fashion with a 13-4 win against Transylvania. And now looking to try to get a win here on the road, but it's going to be a tough one because this is a talented Yellow Jackets program. They've been good for many years to this point, and they take a one-goal lead, 2-1. Yellow Jackets up with nine minutes left to go in the opening quarter. First goal of the night was the first goal of the season for Rollins Heath. Jake Nanoski, first goal of the season for him as well. And then also then the first goal of the year for Jake Kuhnman, number 33, the sophomore attacker from Fairport, New York. BW winning that opening faceoff on the draw. Back on the attack again. Bennett Trout plays this one back to Joe Torberg. Torberg still has it, plays it back to the middle. He gets it again. Has a teammate to the far side. Finds Hunter Bain. Bain behind the net. Trout making a move. That one goes behind the net and out of play. Of course, the nets, the barriers, guarding both ends behind the end zones of the football lines, keeping that ball at least a little bit closer so it doesn't go all the way across the track. Tossed out of the back from the goalie and Adam Hall. And Kenyon, they lose it. Trying to win it back. Battle for the ball. And the Yellow Jackets, they come away with it. And slowing things down is Pax and Allison. Torberg. Eight minutes left to go in the first quarter. The Yellow Jackets on a 2-0 run. 
looking to make it three. Just outside the fan area. Hard contact doubled, but able to just roll that one out to a teammate. Pass was high from number 24, Luke Reine. Taken away by the Yellow Jackets and trying to leak out the other way. That one sails over the outstretched stick of Hunter Bain. Go out of play, though. Last off of the Owls and the Yellow Jackets. They have it once again. On the near side, Trout. Going from the left wing to work behind the net. Drops his shoulder. Here comes the help defense. Switch off. Pass to Nanoski. Can't miss the six foot six frame of the big attacker. Trout wants to step into it. Thought about the shot. Passes that one off and BAME put some heat on that and it's saved. Well done by Hall. The sophomore from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Kenyon had the better of the shots as a team in the first couple minutes of this game. And the Yellow Jackets, they found a way to start getting some shots off themselves in a rhythm. Six total, four on net. Still plenty of time. It's over 30 seconds on that shot clock. But a careless pass as that one sails well over Paxton Allison, the freshman from California. And going to be changes for both of these teams as the Owls trying to clear. Get out of their own defensive half at midfield. In the middle with Rowan Golden. Golden nearly crossed that blue line into the attacking third. He does now on the right wing. Back behind the net. The Owls trailing by one. McCarty finds Golden over the near side. Back to McCarty. Steps into that one, fires that one just a little bit high. LaPiccolo was there. Was able to let that one just go a little bit over the bar, but another opportunity for the Owls. Trying to wrap around and lots of contact on that shot. As David Chintala was barreled over as he fired that one and saw the yellow penalty marker fly up in the air. And we're going to have a brief pause in the action. So we're going to see the Yellow Jackets try to pack it in. As they have a player over on one knee over at the scores table. And they're going to be playing down a man here briefly. So first man up opportunity for the Owls tonight. First for either team. And they're going to score one for one on man up opportunities. And it's a tie ball game, two apiece between the Yellow Jackets and the Owls. Goal, number, four, number four, Gavin Gamucho. The one with the goal. And it was a great finish. Calm, cool, collected. Fired that one in past LaPiccolo. And we're going to have a good one on our hands tonight if things continue the way it's actually begun here in the opening quarter. Pretty even to this point between these two teams. And the mistake for the Yellow Jackets after going on a 2-0 run. Well, it comes back to bite them ultimately and they find this level just as it started. Having an issue scooping up that ball there. And Chintala is going to run it down. And the Owls back on the attack again. 
Had three shot attempts on their last time down the field. And with plenty of time still here in the first quarter, four minutes left to go. An opportunity to potentially go on a bit of a run themselves. Another shot, that one's just a little bit wide to the right. Decent look there for Rollins Heath, who scored the opening goal. Call going against the Owls and the Yellow Jackets. They'll come out of their own defensive end and go back the other way. That goal with five minutes left to go in the opening quarter from Gavin Gamucho. The assist was given to Chase McCarty. Yellow Jackets have it right now. Trying to make a move. Go 1v1 is Koonman. Cutting through defenders. Trying to make something happen. And barreled over. But somehow getting the shot away is Nate Hoover. The sophomore from Worthington. And it's 3-2 BW. Slicing and dicing. A clever finish there from Nate Hoover. He's one of the shiftier, smaller attackers that the Yellow Jackets have. And part of being a smaller guy and being so quick and shifty is that you can just be a bit slippery. And that's exactly what we saw there. Shocked that he was somehow able to get that shot away despite the contact. And then call going against the Owls as number 22, Zach Zool, was for the Yellow Jackets battling for that draw win. BW trying to apply some pressure and make it difficult for the Owls to get out of their own defensive end. They're going to get past half field. Plenty of room here on the near side. Turning is Joe Sakura. Feed into the middle. A save. A dive. And that one's covered up. Well done by Lo Piccolo. And the awareness of Devin Ambrose, the freshman from Mentor, to dive in front as well. So the Yellow Jackets hold strong despite a really good look from the Owls right in front of net. And still Kenyon trails by one with two minutes left to go in the opening quarter. Golden fires that one wide. Kind of in between a shot and a pass there. Couldn't tell if he was trying to sneak that one in the back door, but nonetheless, uh, that's sometimes one of those opportunities where you fired a little bit wide, and if you have somebody there, maybe, maybe, despite the heat on that, can snag it and put it in. One goes a little bit high, Golden unable to corral it, but nonetheless, his teammates there. Gentalo kept it alive for the Owls. Kapral. Oh, that one rattles off of the post. Great look from the senior. McCarty again. Chase McCarty, the Senior midfielder from Maryland saw some space, stepped into that one, fired it, and the woodwork was not his friend. Shot after shot after shot so far for the Owls here in this last really minute of play. Maybe an opportunity again. McCarty might want to step into it. He does, and that one's a goal. Didn't get the first one, rattled off of the post. That one, he buries it. McCarty with the goal. And it's 3-3. Three, three. 
with under one minute remaining in the opening quarter. Fourteen shots for Kenyon. And they hit a bit of a lull in the middle part of the opening quarter. First part, great going their way. Yellow Jackets, momentum shifted their way. Now it's going the way of the visitors of those 14 shots, six of them on goal. Of course, the three goals to show for. The Yellow Jackets, seven shots so far, five on goal. And the Owls have been perfect on their clears as well, getting out of their own defensive end. The Yellow Jackets just going to have to sit in and make sure nothing happens in the last 30 seconds of this quarter. If you can end the first quarter the way that the first quarter would have started, 0-0 at that time, if you can end it 3-3. And it feels like there's not much of a difference in this ball game, but an opportunity here, shot in tight, and it shall save by LaPiccolo. It was a good look for Rollins Heath. Five seconds left to go. Fired up the other end of the field. This one's going to hop right in front of Nanoski. And that does it for the first quarter as Woolard tosses the ball back the other direction. And 3-3, three, three, all level at the break. Before we step aside here, I want to remind everybody that tonight's men's lacrosse game for Yellow Jackets is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics, University Hospitals Drasinski Sports Medicine Institute, proud official healthcare provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes, as well as Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. You are listening to Yellow Jacket Men's Lacrosse on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Back on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Cole McDaniel with you here tonight. 3-3 all level coming out of the first break of the night between the Yellow Jackets and the Visiting Owls. And before we get the second quarter underway, can touch on a few other Ohio Athletic Conference teams are in action tonight or throughout the day. Interesting that Ohio Northern went up against Adrian in non-conference play. That one went to three overtimes. They continued to play and play until finally Adrian was the one who come, came away with the victory, winning that one 12-11. Otterbein facing another non-conference foe in Worcester. They currently trail at the moment 5-2. And Wilmington going up against Mount St. Joseph. No score update on that one. Uh, but that one's being played in Cincinnati, so Wilmington on the road as well. So four OAC teams playing tonight, and then plenty in action this coming Saturday, really the vast majority of the conference. Well, the momentum was going the way of the Owls. End of the first quarter, momentum continuing to swing the way of the visitors in the second quarter, starting the way that the first quarter did, Kenyon taking a lead and breaking the deadlock 4-3 just 40 seconds played so far in the second David Chintala another goal really nice start to the year for him that is 8 goals so far this year by far and away leading his team offensively 
came into the game tonight with seven goals and one assist. So now nine points for him this year. After winning another faceoff, the Owls have it again. On the attack, that one flashes a bit wide from Golden. Looking to the back door there and just could not nestle that one in the net. Decent look from Golden and here are the Owls again with the Yellow Jackets sitting back defensively. Pass into the middle. Opportunity for men tight. Just a bit high. Nathan Casella. I think he's going to want that one back. He can't get much closer. Get much better of a look than he had there. Stepping into that one. Firing it high and wide to the right. McCarty. The Owls again, 15 seconds on that shot clock. Need to get something going on this attack. Yellow Jackets a little bit more disciplined, doing a good job defensively. Saved Le Piccolo initially, and he scoops that one up. An opportunity for BW to clear and go the other direction. Even just a couple shots, an extended spell of being on the other end of the field could change momentum back the way of the Yellow Jackets, and they need it. Nanoski, opportunity for Mintight. Nanoski, he tucks that one home. Talk about efficiency. The Yellow Jackets haven't had nearly as many shots so far, but they find themselves all tied up at 4-4. Four, four. Twelve and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter here from George Finney Stadium. Second goal of the night for Jake Nanoski, his second on the season. Nanoski, an offensive threat for BW. Definitely a name that's circled on the scouting reports for any team going up against the Yellow Jack. It's been that way the past couple seasons. Nothing changes here. Nanoski has it again. And the height advantage is, is something that really helps Nanoski as well. He gets some angles to be able to shoot uh, where others really don't have the opportunity to do so. Great with being able to wrap around and combines well with a lot of these quick shifty guys. Speaking of a quick shifty guy out there, Nate Hoover. Hoover cutting through a couple defenders. Got on his left side and that one right down the middle. And if it went to either side, maybe an opportunity to get that one past Hall, but Hall meets that one well. Yellow Jackets have it again in transition, looking to push the pace. In the attacking third, that one fired wide. It's saved, but going wide the whole way for John Bartolo. We're going to have a timeout here. We'll take one with them. 4-4 four, four is the score. 11 minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the second quarter. We'll be back on BWYellowJackets.com and OACTV.
out of the timeout. There's the whistle from the official and signal to start running the clock once again. It's the Owls are on the attack, looking to take a lead for their second time tonight. Level at four apiece here from George Finney Stadium. Pass a bit high, but dealt with by Heath. Near side, Gamucho. Pass that one off to Lewis. Heath has it. Pass came in a little bit hot to Flynn. Flynn didn't catch it cleanly. It bounced, but he was able to track that one down. A lot of contact right now. That one hops to Lo Piccolo. And the Yellow Jackets having a hard time getting on top of this one. Lo Piccolo scoops it up, though. Spinning away, losing it, but getting it back. Switch to the far side, high to Trout. And Trout can slow things down. Yellow Jackets on the attack. Credit to the Yellow Jackets with how efficient they've been shooting-wise. Again, only nine shots so far, but the four goals to show for. But it feels like despite a little bit of momentum maybe going the way the Yellow Jackets after they tied things up again, Kenyon's gotten the better of face-offs won, ground balls. They've been winning a lot of those opportunities, but the Yellow Jackets continue to find a way to score. They take a lead again. Jake Nanoski, hat trick, three goals tonight, five, four, Just under 10 minutes left to go in the second quarter. And back and forth, we continue to go. As soon as one team takes the lead, the other goes on a 2-0 run to put themselves up by one. And it's continually just been trading blows here so far. And the Owls, they win the face off again. Still getting the better of the Yellow Jackets from that standpoint. Kenyon switch out to the far side Golden making his way forward jump on that shot trying to tuck it in the bottom left corner a little bit wide it's going to be Yellow Jackets ball they're going to have possession trying to clear out of their own defensive third this one fired up the field connects with Allison Back in the middle to Torberg. Torberg and Allison just throwing it back and forth. Allison loses control, but gets that one before it goes out of play. Hunter Bame, the senior from Delaware, has checked in. Torberg wants a shot. Torberg, that one was going high and off to the left the whole way. So 40 seconds on that shot clock. Eight and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. Trout looking to turn. Tight defense being applied. And just staying after it was Colin Williams, the freshman from South Carolina, doing a nice job against Trout. But BW forcing a turnover on the far side, and their bench is loving it. Play gets rolling again. Slip on the bump there. Penalty marker flies up in the air. And well, the Yellow Jackets, they have been a man down once. The only time anybody had a man-up opportunity, that was Kenyon earlier, and they capitalized. Well, the Yellow Jackets, they're going to have an opportunity of their own to do so here. 
As you're going to see the purple jerseys packed in tight, trying to make sure nothing can go through the middle and make it more difficult for the Yellow Jackets to get a good clean shot off. But BW, man up. Trout and Nanoski there in the middle just trying to work in and out of those bodies and try to create a little bit of confusion as they're switching off down there. That one's tipped, goes out of play. We'll remain with BW. Pass to Hoover. Switch to the far side. Now back with Hoover. Near side to Jodgen. Shot fired in low. Had some pace on it. Skipped by. But Ian Sheely unable to find the target. Sheely looking for a high pass in the direction of number 33, Jake Kuhnman, and that one is squandered opportunity for BW. So well done defensively by Kenyon, staying patient, staying disciplined, and forced the Yellow Jackets into a mistake as they got a little bit greedy. And the Owls back the other way, trailing by one. Trying to get out of their own half, nice turn. Scooping this one ahead. Now up along the left wing and slowing things down is Rollins Heath. The junior from New Jersey gonna walk this one back to the 40 yard line on the football hashes and then look to make a run forward. Turning on the Jets, passing this one behind the net. Owls continuing to work it around. Bump from behind. Pass behind Gamucho. Having a difficult time scooping this one up. Yellow Jackets trying to get it. And they're able to do so. So the physicality and the awareness from BW paying off back there. And the Owls, they're going to get it right back. Just over five minutes left to go in the second quarter. Neither team pulling away to this point. Coming way forward is the goalie, Adam Hall. Feet in the middle that's deflected. And the Yellow Jackets going to retake possession. Loudon Peters, the sophomore from Greensboro, New North Carolina, doing a nice job defensively, harassing his man and winning it back for BW. Noah Bartos to Nanoski, working in from the right wing. Bame's going to check in. Pass to the back door. Nanoski near side. Finds his man slipping inside from in tight and a great save. Still fighting for possession. Bodies all over the place after the Adam Hall save. In the Owls, they're going to have it. But a decent look there from Joe Torberg. Thought he was maybe going to be able to tuck that one home and put his team up by two, but no, still just a one goal advantage for the Yellow Jackets here at home. A stumble, but able to get the pass away. Jake Donaldson Reed scoops it back to Heath. Heath to the near side. Capral. Switch to the middle and checking back in, Lucas Flynn.
Excellent move. Juked his man out of his shoes. Number 22, David Chintala. Shot from in tight. Rattles against the post. Le Piccolo made the save initially. Makes another save. Good look there for the Owls, but Samuel Le Piccolo standing on his head. Flynn in the middle. Casella on the near side. McCarty over to the far side. Passing that one off to Golden. Golden in tight. Golden fires that shot into the chest of Lo Piccolo. And Lo Piccolo, not one of the bigger goalies that you're going to see. Again, sometimes you see teams go with goalies that take up a lot more of that frame back there. But more of a lean, nimble build. And the agility of Lo Piccolo showing. He's had a couple really nice diving saves and doing a good job jumping on top of that ball, making sure it doesn't squirm out, get away. And we're going to have a whistle here with a pause in the action with just over two minutes left. The Yellow Jackets, they want to talk things over, make sure they get a good offensive set here and see if they can capitalize and put themselves up by two. And a reminder that tonight's Yellow Jacket men's lacrosse game is being brought to you by the Oswald Company. Risk and insurance leaders since 1893. Chuck Rotuno and OE Connection LLC, your global automotive technology provider, and Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official healthcare provider of Baldwin Wallace University. You are listening to Yellow Jacket Men's Lacrosse on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Back out of the timeout. Just over two minutes left to go in the second quarter. Yellow Jackets looking to add on to their lead. 50 seconds on the shot clock. Working his way forward through the middle. Dodgen passing that one off. Torberg back to Dodgen. Spinning. Clear some space. Nanoski. Thought about stepping into that one. Making a man miss. Through the middle. Great look. Nanoski. Four goals tonight. And he puts his team up by two. Six to four. It's just under two minutes remaining in the second quarter. Credit to the Yellow Jackets. Really getting things going their way here at the moment. The crowd that showed up tonight. In a much warmer night, like a heat wave here in February. As at the start of the face-off tonight. It was over 50 degrees. But the crowd getting into it, getting loud, cheering on their team that leads by two. So the Owls have it on the attack again, now trailing by two. And for long stretches of the night, they would argue they've been the better team. So a goal before going into the locker rooms for half would be huge 
for the Owls. Certainly within striking distance. Opportunity to make something happen, and that they do. Hard shot buried into the upper part of that net. Smashed that one past Samuel o Piccolo, and the Owls down by one once again. Number 22, David Chintala with the goal. And he has been a goal scoring machine this season so far. Nine goals now on the year, 10 points. So he's in double figures this season already. And nearly just a game and a half played so far. So if you're a future opponent, of Kenyon, well, you know a name that you can circle on that roster. Chintala is certainly somebody to watch out for. Timeout on the field. The Owls want to talk some things over, see if they can level things at six apiece here with one minute remaining in the second quarter. We'll step aside with them, and we'll be right back following the quick break. Out of the timeout, one minute left in the second quarter. Owls on the attack once again. 27 shots, 14 on goal. A lot of. Five second difference between that shot clock and the Still plenty of time for the Owls right now. 22 seconds left in the quarter. Shot from in tight. Saved by Low Piccolo and the Yellow Jackets come away with it. They're going to push the pace. BW has an opportunity to maybe put themselves up by two. They're going to have to act fast. Six seconds left to go. Cutting inside. Trout. A lot of contact. Try to spin off of that one. Tough angle. Caught the back of the bar there. And that does it for the first half. BW leads 6-5 to five over the Owls. Before we step aside here for the halftime break, want to give you a scoring recap here from the first half. It was Kenyon who jumped out to an early lead courtesy of a Rollins-Heath goal. Then the Yellow Jackets, they tied it up by way of Jake Nanoski, his first goal of the year. BW, 2-0 run. They go up to one, courtesy of Jake Kuhnman. Then 2-2, level again by way of Gavin Gamucho, assist by Chase McCarty. And then BW takes a lead again. Nate Hoofer makes it 3-2. 3-3 three 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 then, as Chase McCarty with his first goal of the year. And then 2-0 run for Kenyon as they then went up 4-3. David Chintala, his eighth goal already this year. Yellow Jackets went on a three-goal run then. An excellent run for the Yellow Jackets. Nanoski with his second goal of the night, then his third, then his fourth. Nanoski continued to find the back of the net, had the Yellow Jackets up 6-4, and then finally 
Who else? David Chintala responds, and Kenyon just finding themselves trailing by one, six to five at the break. Kenyon has had more shots so far, 28 to be exact, 15 on goal compared to 16 shots for the Yellow Jackets, 11 on frame. Still face-offs one, going the way of Kenyon, nine compared to four. Ground balls, 19 picked up for Kenyon compared to 13 for the Yellow Jackets. And BW actually has been perfect on clears, 10 of 10. Kenyon started off perfect, but then didn't have as many in the later stages there. Seven of eight. And man up opportunities, Kenyon, one for one, BW, 0 for one. That does it for the first half. We'll step aside here, eight minutes up on the clock. As the teams go to the locker rooms, they're going to talk things over and uh, really try to stay loose. So we'll step aside here. We'll take a break on BWYellowJackets.com and OACTV. Don't go anywhere. Second half upcoming shortly.
15 minutes up on the clock and we're set to get the third quarter underway here from George Finney Stadium. Yellow Jackets leading coming out of the halftime break 6-5 to five over the Kenyon College Owls. Gave you a quick scoring recap at the end of the second quarter. And gave you an update on the stats as well. And the Yellow Jackets, they're going to be on the attack here looking to take a two-goal advantage. They were up 6-4 and the Owls, they scored in the latter stages of the second quarter. Nearly had an opportunity again to try to make it level. Unable to do so, but BW had a little bit of time, talk things over, and try to get momentum going back their way. Great opportunity here, and that is exactly what they do. First shot of the third quarter, and another goal for the Yellow Jackets coming by way of number 33, Jake Koonman, his second of the night. Thirty-one seconds is all it took in the third quarter for the Yellow Jackets to go up by two goals, seven to five. And on the faceoff, battling for it right now, getting a bit of a push there for the Owls. Well done to come away with it. It's number 28, Thomas Nelson. Pass midfield, trying to beat Bartos there, and Bartos wins it back for the Yellow Jackets. Bennett Trout into the attacking third. Thought about stepping in that shot. Really clever spin inside and fires that shot from in tight. And he's hit after he scores the goal. And I think probably the second penalty marker likely going to go against Bennett Trout there. The sophomore from Pickerington standing over his his defender who was down on the ground. Trout emotions were high because of the contact he took. Beautiful finish to make it 8-5. The officials are going to sort things out. They're talking to the scores table over there on the far side. And we'll get the official PA announcement here in just a moment. So with the pause in the action, again, it was a great finish to get the goal there by Bennett Trout. They just updated up on the scoreboard. 8-5 to five is the score now as the Yellow Jackets lead. The Owls, as we get this one in play again, they have it on the attack. Both Trout and number 51, Joe Sikora, the senior from Boulder, Colorado, they're over on a knee in front of the scores table. And a goal for the Owls. So they respond right back by way of Rollins Heath, junior from Montclair, New Jersey, making it eight to six. So a lot of action. A lot's happened in the opening minute and a half of play in the third quarter. And we're going to have a face-off. It's number 22, Zach Zool, junior from Strongsville, going to try to win this face-off for the Yellow Jackets. Battling for it right now, but coming away with it's number 28, Thomas Nelson again. He's been dominant on face-offs. Now in the attacking third. Clear path to goal. Shot inside, skipping that one in. Owls. Pouring it on here in the last few moments. Number 55, Henry Mortarelli, freshman from New York. So Mortarelli making it 8-7. 
Just over 13 minutes left. That only took 16 seconds. So proving to be a costly mistake there. Certainly understand in this game the emotions being high from Bennett Trout. But after you take that contact and you score the goal, and you can't stand over the guy and shout at him. It hurts your team. And unfortunately for the Yellow Jackets, being up three, biggest lead of the night, they now only find themselves up by one. Shot from in tight, a lot of contact. Keaton Trout on the shot there. Back the other direction for the Owls. Trailing by one. Opportunity to level this thing. Go on a 3-0 run of themselves. Both teams now have the full amount of players out there on the field that they should have. As Troughton. Sakura up from the scores table. Shot was going to be fired a little bit wide. Le Piccolo didn't want a chance. It got his stick out there. Help from his teammate to cover that one up. Outlet pass. Just kept in play. And given away. The Owls have it. From in tight. 3-0 run. Kenyon. Level at 8. Less than two minutes ago. The Yellow Jackets felt great about where they stood after the Jake Koonman goal. And then the Bennett Trout goal as well. Up three. And they fell apart here the last two minutes. Careless mistakes and mistakes against a good team like Kenyon can come back and bite you. Yellow Jackets are good themselves. Definitely proved it tonight, and we've known it for, for years now. That being said, though, momentum just continually going the way of the Owls. Winning another faceoff. They've doubled up the amount of faceoffs won tonight. Can they make it a 4-0 run and take a lead once again? It's been a bit since they've had a lead. Trying to pass that one through some traffic in the middle. Lo Piccolo out of his goal. Able to retreat, get back to it, kick save. With the right leg, quick reactions. That one firing in, had some pace on it. Chintala, sophomore from New Albany. Anytime he has possession, he is a threat to fire a shot. We'll see if the Owls try to get it back to him here on the near side. Instead, spinning in the middle, going back the other direction. Flynn, trying to spin past Bartos, rattles that one off the outside of the post. Hitting the upright, and that one goes out of play. Going to be brought back in by the Owls. Heath, that one lost. Gamucho trying to run this one down. Battle for possession. Three purple jerseys getting back, and Rollins Heath again. Heath has it. Bump there is Lewis looking for some health. From help from Heath, excuse me. Shot. And some contact there before. That one from Lucas Flynn, and that one took a high bounce off of the top of the crossbar. But the call going against the Owls previously before the shot. Bartos up to Bennett Trout. Ian Sheely. In the middle. Hoover checking in on the far side as Bartos will go to the bench.
Koonman found some space, wanted that shot. That one off of the foot of Hall in goal. Yellow Jackets will still have it. Bring it back in play. Bennett Drought looking for space, spinning. Nanoski's on the far side. Hasn't gotten possession until now. Nanoski's been the goal scoring threat for the Yellow Jackets tonight. Spinning, looking for some room. Pass in the middle, and that one's intercepted through the traffic. Well done by the Owls to come away with it, and they're going to look to clear. Ben David is playing it up through the middle. Sakura nearly loses it. Davidis and unable to clear. The Yellow Jack is doing a nice job making things difficult for the Owls. Couldn't get out of their own half. And action restarts at midfield for BW. Behind the net with Keaton Trout. Koonman. Sheely. Sheely spinning. Fires that one into the back left corner. Not enough time for Adam Hall to react to that one. And Sheely just finding enough space. That one really had that almost like side arm action, like a baseball player throwing it from the side and just a line drive on a rope. Really nice finish there as that one came out of the basket there on the stick really sweetly. And the Yellow Jackets, they end that 3-0 Owls run. And they find themselves up by one goal, 9-8. Eight minutes left to go in the third quarter, and the Owls on the attack once again. Gamucho. Swinging it around here to the near side. Chintala. All the way to Golden now. Back to McCarty. McCarty looking to make a run. He can fire him from deep. Help defense comes across. Had to think better of it. Pass it away. And that one's intercepted in the middle. Scooped up by Lo Piccolo. And well done by the Yellow Jackets defensively. Looking to leak out. Pass midfield. Streaking down the right wing. And going to be a delayed penalty. Shot fired from in close. And the official is going to blow the whistle. And we're going to have a brief pause in the action. Going to be changes for both teams. Seven minutes left to go in the third. Number 55, Henry Mottarelli. Going to take a seat over in front of the scorer's table. And so a man-up opportunity for BW. Yellow Jackets, this is their second time being a man-up. 0 for 1 to this point. An opportunity to go 500. Purple jersey staying compact. Sheely wants to fire that shot in. Deflect it out of play. And Noah Dodgen. Going to bring this one back in. The freshman from Hilliard.
So 0, 2, 0 for 2 now for the Yellow Jackets. The Owls are able to match up, go man on man. Sitting in defensively, doing a nice job, making it difficult to try to get a shot off. Not too many good looks here. The last little bit for BW. Help defense comes across. Frees up Sheely. Sheely wants to fire that one in low. It's deflected. As it sails out of play. 12 seconds now on that shot clock. Have to make something happen here. Maybe one last opportunity. Trout spinning. Needs to spin again. Needs some help. Four seconds. Trout has to pass this one away. Instead he slips. And violation there as it times out. And that was maybe, if not the most, one of the most organized defensive sets from the Owls we've seen tonight. They hold strong and give themselves an opportunity here to go back the other way and maybe level things up again. Owls need help. BW make it difficult to get past midfield. Penalty markers fly in the air. It's lots of contact by number 19. Alden Korber, the freshman, is. The Owls player had just gone past midfield. So a delayed penalty right now as the Yellow Jackets try to sit in defensively. Nanoski back to help. Gamucho, Flynn. Flynn backing in and fires that shot high. And here we're going to have some changes. As you're going to see a man up opportunity now for the Owls. Four and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Nanoski, the one who had to go over the scores table. As both he and Elden Corber, the ones applying that pressure there just a few moments ago. Pass in the middle. Great opportunity to look inside. And a weak shot there. Lo Piccolo dealt with that changeup quite easily. Opportunity to clear. Finds Bartos. Up on the left wing. Trout. Behind the net. Looking to wrap around. Taking the ground there. Almost got his leg trapped really underneath of number 45, Colin Williams. Intercepted by the Yellow Jackets. But just kicked ahead, not able to scoop that one up. And here come the Owls. 1v1, turning on the Jets, cutting inside, delaying the shot, and firing that one in, tucking it home to the back corner, David Chintala. Chintala again, leveling it up on the scoreboard. 9-9 nine, nine between the Yellow Jackets and the Owls. And Chintala nearing 10 goals. Excuse me, actually, no. Chintala, again, he got 10 goals already on the last one. That one puts it at 11 on the year. So he's into double figures, well into double figures here at this point. Zach Zool gets held up there, put his arms up in the air, wondering how he wasn't getting a call as Thomas Nelson had a handful of jersey. But the Owls winning another faceoff. off 
the Yellow Jackets can win tonight at home. Obviously did it the hard way. It's hard to win one where you're losing the majority of the face-offs and you're having to sit back defensively a ton. But ultimately, they've been able to go on runs themselves. Been efficient tonight. Mentioned that earlier. But they need their defense to stand strong once again. Two and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Pass back into the middle. McCarron. Casella is getting in close still. The Al is working it around. 15 seconds on that shot clock. Have to make something happen. Pass back in the middle. Six seconds. Stepping into that shot and saved by Lo Piccolo. Decent look there for Chase McCarty and McCarty not able to tuck that one home. He can certainly fire from out there. McCarty has rattled the post. He buried a shot from deep, similar position earlier. That one didn't have much time to catch and shoot, really collect it. Uh, and because of that, shot was really right down the middle. Just over a minute left. Can the Yellow Jackets in the third quarter with the lead? And likely unless something changes, no, they cannot, as that one passed a little bit behind Bame. And Hunter Bame unable to corral that. Goes out of play, turned over. And the Owls back the other way with one minute left. Trying to find some space. Instead passing this one away. Flynn turning and firing. And Lo Piccolo with the save. Thought before that pass, Chintalo might try to fire himself. But anytime he has it, you know he wants to shoot. Yellow Jack is doing a nice job defensively. They have 15 seconds left. Bartos pushing the pace. Maybe an opportunity in the middle. And the whistle goes. And that one waved off before the shot. And unfortunate for the Yellow Jackets because they would have gone up by one goal. But they took a timeout, wanted to talk things over with 14 seconds left. So they're going to have to draw up a, a great play to get a quick shot off, maybe get a good look in from uh, really close in and see if they can take the lead. Well, tonight's Yellow Jacket Men's lacrosse game is being brought to you by Barron's Bus Lines, the official charter bus company of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, a great place before or after any Yellow Jacket event. And Antonio's Pizzeria of Middleburg Heights, the official pizza sponsor of Yellow Jacket Athletics. You are listening to Yellow Jacket Men's Lacrosse on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. We'll be right back. Out of the timeout, 14 seconds left. There's the whistle back in play. Yellow Jackets. Sheely back to the middle. Eight seconds left. Have to make a move. Nanoski has it. Pass to the middle. Shot fired in low. And it's saved. Well done by Adam Hall. And the Yellow Jackets may regret that timeout. Could have been up to nine instead. Nine. Nine. After that shot and that goal was taken after the whistle for the timeout. So level 
at the break. We'll be right back for the start of the fourth and final quarter tonight from George Finney Stadium. You're watching and listening live on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. Start of the fourth quarter, level at nine. The Owls have been dominant on faceoffs. Thomas Nelson trying to win another one up against Zach Zool. That is what he does. Nelson streaking back the other way. Zool tried to track that one down. Shot in low. Saved by LaPiccolo. Great hustle. The Yellow Jackets have possession here. 15 seconds in to the fourth quarter. All level pass in the middle. Sheely turning. Crossing midfield. We're going to see Hoover coming in in just a moment. Hoover. Floats that one back to Kuhnman. Kuhnman in the attacking third. Sheely wants to fire that one in low, and that one goes wide right. Yellow Jackets will still have it. Bring this one back in play will be Keaton Trout, the older of the two Trouts on the team for the Yellow Jackets, the senior from Pickerington. Trout turning, firing that one in low. That one bouncing out of play. Still Yellow Jackets have it. 24 seconds up on that shot clock, so time to maybe get another shot or two off. Nanoski moving to the middle of the field. They're able to find Nanoski. Steps into it, fires from way back, and that one just a little bit wide. Goes out of play, so 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Going to be one more opportunity for BW to try to get something off here. Kenyon has nearly doubled them up in shots to this point. That one fired in on the pass through some traffic. And that does it for that attack for the Yellow Jackets. The Owls looking to clear. Leaks out to the far side. Pass up ahead in the middle. Connects with Fulton. Lewis has it. Back to Flynn and back to Lewis. Near side now with Heath. Heath looking to make a move 1v1. Spinning. Thought he might try to spin again to try to get a shot off. Instead, pass that one away. Gamucho. Here's a guy who wants to shoot Chintala. Unable to do so there. The Owls looking to break the deadlock. Outstretched with Lopiccolo. Just a little bit wide to the left. Leaking out and losing it. Just trying to get that head down the field and trying to run before that one's actually secured. John Bartolotto. Unfortunate mistake by the senior from New York. 
You have to haul that one in before you turn and run. Whether football, whether lacrosse. Same premise there with that. You can take your eyes off and uh, try to go the other way. Again, you can make that mistake. But Al's not going to punish the Yellow Jackets for that mistake going the other way. Instead, the Yellow Jackets can try to look to clear from their own end. Lopiccolo not afraid to make his way forward in the direction of Bartos. And Bartos not able to haul that one in. So a couple of mistakes back and forth. A bit of sloppiness for both of these teams. With just under 12 minutes left to go in this game tonight. On the near side, the Owls back to the middle now. Casella has a bit of space in front of him. Going to be a tough angle to shoot. Thinks better of it. McCarty. Tight pressure being applied. Spinning away. The jump. And straight into the basket there of Lopiccolo. It was going to be going a little bit high anyway, but Lopiccolo making sure that he comes away with the save. Take it away. Owls, great opportunity from in tight. Mistake getting out of their own end by the Yellow Jackets. And the Owls on the road punish BW. And they lead 10-9. Ten, Ten and a half minutes left to go in this game. The players in purple loving that. And a lot of energy over there on their sideline. After the tight pressure, winning that one back. And ultimately, who else? Of course, it's David Chintala again. A goal-scoring machine. I'll tell you about a machine. That's number 28, Thomas Nelson at winning face-offs. Continues to win face-off after face-off throughout the night. And that's how he gives the Owls possession once again, leading by one. Score updates in non-conference action, at least in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Ohio Northern mentioned that they fell in three overtimes to Adrian by way of 12-11 to 11 being the score. Otterbein. They fell on the road at Worcester, 14 to 10. And then the other one currently going on at the moment in Cincinnati, Wilmington going on the road to Mount St. Joseph and they lead eight to four. Nanoski has it. Nanoski been the most efficient attacking player for the Yellow Jackets. If anyone could get them a goal when they need it most, feels like Nanoski could be the hot hand. Still a lot of time to play. Nine minutes left. Just trailing by one. Pass in the middle. Lots of contact. Penalty marker flies up in the air. It was going to be a delayed penalty. Uh, but that call is going to come pretty quick as the Yellow Jackets lost possession. And they have an excellent chance here right now. They're going to have a man-up opportunity. Have not made anything of these man-up opportunities. Just a handful of them so far tonight. But gone over so far. Switch to Hoover. Danoski is trying to maybe get free on that back door. Shot fired off the post. Trout had a really nice look. Nearly tucked it home in the upper right-hand corner. A couple centimeters to the left. I mean, it's a 
game of inches, maybe even less than inches there. Still the Yellow Jackets, they have an opportunity. And that was their best look so far that they've had in a man up opportunity. So maybe things are trending the way that they need here. Pause in the action. Something needing fix with the shot clock, I'd be assuming. Looks like it had reset, but shouldn't have reset. And they're trying to get this corrected here right now. Uh, nothing changed on the clock, but the officials just signaled to play and go ahead. So not entirely sure what that was all about. Sheely. Dodgen has it right now. Back to Hoover. Hoover makes a man miss. Trying to spin and get inside. Not close enough. Not the angle he wanted. Nanoski. Again, these teams are even strength right now. Shot fired just a bit wide there on the jump from Ian Sheely as it goes out of play. Two seconds left on the shot clock. Maybe enough time to bring it in, pass it back to Nanoski and fire one off, but no, not even going to have time for that. So they toss that one out of play. And the Owls have it now. Opportunity to kill some clock. The clock's their friend here. Under eight minutes left. Up one. Good feet in the middle. It's calm and composed from Adam Hall. Felt unfazed. Literally looked like a slant run by Casella there over the middle and just put on the money by Hall. Shot going wide the whole way there. No chance from that angle from Jack McCarron. Piccolo gets barreled over as he tries to chase that one down. Empty net. And the Yellow Jackets trying to cover for their goalie being out of the frame there in between the sticks. And I think that was number 43, yes, going over the side. Will Lash, the senior from East Lansing, Michigan. He trucked. The attacker there for the Owls didn't quite see the number, but got barreled over. Did enough to alter the shot, so maybe gave the Yellow Jackets actually a chance if they can have a strong stand here being down a man. So the Owls, the first time they were up a man, they scored a goal. To give themselves a two-goal lead, maybe, they can get a good shot off here. So far, the yellow jerseys, excuse me, the white jerseys with the gold helmets doing a good job keeping things crowded there in the middle. Not a whole lot of space there for McCarty to try to fire that shot past number 24, Benjamin Glover. McCarty steps into it, fires low. Le Piccolo gets to his knees and makes the save. Still the Owls have it.
Switch to the far side. Good look and a goal. Two goals and man up opportunities for the Owls. Well, and they lead by two. So maybe that's the difference tonight for the visitors. Six minutes left in the Yellow Jackets. They need to make something happen quickly. And with this being a game of back and forth, a lot's been changing pretty fast. Certainly an opportunity to do so and try to level things up because of the time on the clock. When goals have happened, it's usually been in quick succession. Rollins Heath, the goal. Chase McCarty, the assist. Second assist of the night for McCarty. After another face-off win by the Owls, they can just try to kill off as much clock as they can. Of course, 65 seconds still on that shot clock. But if they can get this down to just a little over a minute, leading by two, they have to feel good about their chances. Room to shoot, and too much room to shoot. A goal there for the Owls again. Tanner Lewis, the freshman from Alexandria, Virginia, buries that shot, and it's 12 to nine. So for Kenyon, if you're watching and listening at home, supporter of the Owls, you probably have to feel the same way as I would just assume that those players do down there on the field. When you look at the stats and how the game has gone, the vast majority of time you felt like you've been the better team tonight. It's just been a matter of the Yellow Jackets had been able to get the goals when they need the goals, gone on runs to make things interesting, to take leads, to make it close. Uh, but now here as of late, the fourth quarter has really been all Kenyon. And now leading by three, they have it again. This is where the Owls can really separate themselves. 52 shots compared to just 28 for BW. 32 of those 52 shots on goal, forcing 20 saves from Samuel Lopiccolo, who's had a lot of action there in net. Another shot opportunity. McCarty flashes that one just a little bit wide. Over four minutes left to go. McCarty again. Bartos defending him. Bartos slips. Room to shoot. That one fires high. Yellow Jackets have to get a stand here. Goal for Kenyon would really close this thing out. Good look from inside. Nearly, nearly found its way to the back of the net. Through a lot of traffic. That one deflects out of play and a timeout down on the field. Yellow Jackets, they need to talk things over. They really need this timeout and this breather as things are starting to slip away from them here with just under four minutes left to go in the fourth. We'll step aside here. We'll be back after the break on BWLOJackets.com and OACTV.
back following the timeout. And 50 seconds on the shot clock as it had gotten reset just a little bit ago. Which really helps the Owls to try to drain more clock here at this point. They can get it down to a little, little under three minutes left to go. If they use up as much time as possible. Shot from in tight, jumping is golden. That one smashes into the floor and bounces wide. Still the Owls have it. 25 seconds on that shot clock. There's the whistle from the official to get things back in play. McCarty spinning. Five seconds and just throwing this one out of play. So the Yellow Jackets getting the stop that they needed. But now they have to score and score quickly on the other end. Sense of urgency building for the Yellow Jackets. They're going to look to try to push the pace. Slowing it down for just a moment here. Two and a half minutes left. Torberg. Needs some help. Finds the help. Trout. Keaton Trout. Cleared some room. That one just fires wide to the right of that bottom right hand corner. Two minutes and 11 seconds left. Down three. In tight and a goal for VW. The Yellow Jackets now trail by two. 12 to 10, two minutes left. Joe Torberg, freshman from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Good finish there for him. And this is exactly the same score that the Yellow Jackets lost by on Saturday when they went down to center college down in Kentucky. Lost 12 to 10. It's 12 to 10 on the scoreboard here right now. They have to make something happen quickly. Zool doing a good job being physical, nearly pushing the man out of play. Trapped in the middle, trying to take that one away. Yellow Jack is still fighting for it. Somehow out of the traffic, Heath still has it for the Owls. And a timeout for the Owls. They want to talk things over. Credit to the Yellow Jackets for the hustle that they showed and the aggressiveness, but the single-handed effort there from Rollins Heath keeps possession in their favor and we have a minute and 41 seconds left in this one and we'll step aside here during this break on bwyellowjackets.com and OAC TV.
out of the timeout. The Yellow Jackets had actually just won it back in the corners. A little hard to see. But before that timeout, they got it back. So they have a minute and a half to work. Down two. Need some quick goals. Shot in low. Scored. And the Yellow Jackets. So momentum going their way. Now down just one. 2-0 run. BW. And a Jake Kuhnman goal. Making it 12-11. A minute and 22 seconds left. Now, here's the big thing that's a problem for the Yellow Jackets. They have to win this face-off. You really have to win this face-off, you feel like, with the time on the clock. And Thomas Nelson has been so dominant at winning them throughout the night. Yellow Jackets need this win. Evan Vetter trying to get it for his team. And no. It looked like he finally won one. And a call goes against him. Yellow Jacket staff not happy with that at all. Understandably so. Now BW just has to sit in and defend. And the Owls, they could drain this whole shot clock all the way down and it would end the game. They have three seconds to spare. So BW has to do something to win this one back. Have to pressure. Forty seconds left. Owls looking to go two and zero to start the year. The Yellow Jackets nearly, at least within range of dropping to zero and two at the beginning of this 2024 season. 20 seconds left. And the Owls just playing keep away at the moment. And somehow the Yellow Jackets, they get it back. Not much time, nine seconds left to go. They have to fly back the other way. Got to throw a long pass and this one sailed well over the head of Jake Nanoski. An opportunity squandered. And the officials are going to talk things over here for a second. Uh, there maybe should be two seconds on the clock. I mean, two seconds wouldn't really give the Yellow Jackets time to do anything, but we'll see exactly what they do. Yellow Jacket players over by the coaching staff getting something drawn up here as the officials are talking things over and going to sort this out. Nanoski's going to inbound. He's going to need somebody to break free right in front of net. It all depends upon how much time they have. There it is. So two seconds go up on the clock. As I said just a few moments ago, figured it was two seconds, and, and that's hardly any time to do anything. They're just going to have to throw a pass in the middle and hope that one of the five white jerseys there in the middle is able to really deflect, catch the ball, deflect it, throw it right in the net. Pass in the middle, and that one's going to go all the way through. And the Owls, they win a thriller on the road here at George Finney Stadium, 12-11 to over the Baldwin-Wallace Yellow Jackets. Well, Kenyon, they moved to 2-0 to start the year after the win against Transylvania and then this close one against the Yellow Jackets. Taking a look at what they have next on their schedule. Next for them, they're going to be at Capitol, so another Ohio Athletic Conference team in the Comets making their way down to Bexley. That one starts at 1 o'clock on Saturday. For the Yellow Jackets, tough start to the year. They did all they could do at the end to try to pull this one closer. First game of the season at center, they've dropped that one 12 to 10, this one tonight 12 to 11 and had a chance right at the end to try to make things level, try to take it to overtime, unable to do so. So 0 and 2 to start the year, but a pretty good Yellow Jackets team that they want to recover obviously. In many ways they were dominated on faceoffs. Felt like Kenyon 
for the vast majority of the game, may have been the better team despite all the efforts from the Yellow Jackets. But BW can try to respond against oh, an NCAC opponent. They'll be at Denison on... Uh, actually, next Wednesday is when they'll be at Denison. So they have the weekend off, time to rest, time to recover. That one starts at 6 o'clock. For myself, Cole McDaniel, I want to thank everybody for watching and listening here on BWYellowJackets.com and OAC TV. That does it for the broadcast tonight. For everybody who came out, supported, and made the trip, have safe travels home this evening. For everybody who watched and listened at home, thanks again for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your week.